Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malsberg. No, I think we have been under serious threat my entire presidency. They're gaining strength in some places. We've seen Europeans uh, who are sympathetic to their cause traveling into Syria and now may travel into Iraq, getting battle-hardened. Now, we're spending a lot of time, and we have been for years, making sure that we are uh, improving intelligence so that we can respond to that. And there are going to be times where we take strikes against organizations that could do us harm. All right, folks, uh, the president talking about the uh, security threats that we face, of course, uh, uh, you know, sugarcoating it a little bit. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it is out there, and we're joined right now, I'm happy to say, by Brian Zimmer. He's president of the Coalition for a Secure Driver's License, and he's also the former senior investigator for the House Judiciary Committee. And, Brian, welcome. Good to see you. Pleasure to be here. All right. Um, let, let, let's talk a little bit about, uh, before we get to the driver's license, I think that's very, very important because it all, it, it's all the same here. It all, it all segues right into it. Um, ISIS, and we've heard, uh, last week we heard from Mike Rogers about these people, a lot of them are Europeans, they went over there, they have visa passports, they could get into Western countries and they could come here without a visa. How big a threat is it uh, to our homeland, not to our interests overseas, but to our homeland, uh, that ISIS is, is uh, doing what they're doing and succeeding the way they're succeeding? I think it's a huge threat, and the threat in terms of when it's going to be realized is probably a year and a half away although there may be some lone wolves in the meantime that come wandering back. Why do you say a year and a half Because away? it'll take them about a year to a year and a half to establish their caliphate, which they will. It's being backed by very rich people in the Middle East and other countries. Those people, although some of them are religiously motivated, many of them are getting paid cold hard cash for that activity uh, from certain Middle Eastern countries that would like to see the Shia uh, push back. And uh, the result is you have a lot of young men who previously were just uh, young men like young men we might know in the neighborhood, but now they're being trained, they're being put into combat, they're helping carry out uh, retaliatory acts against Shiites, cutting their heads off, as we've seen on television and or heard about. Uh, so they're going to get very hard. And, and they're, I'm sorry, and, and they're training. And when, once they're set up with their caliphate, then they have a, 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 a they could relax, so to speak, take a deep breath, and and start uh, setting their sights on what they could do here. Well, this group uh, had a severance. They were originally sponsored by Al-Qaeda. And in February, the leader of Al-Qaeda uh, broke ties with them because they, they couldn't stay where he thought they should be, which was in Iraq. And in particular, they announced they were going to conduct operations worldwide. Let, let me just interrupt you a second, because the, the popular media refrain is they were kicked out of Al-Qaeda because they were too violent. And I keep saying, Al-Qaeda is not just as violent? I mean, uh, I'll, 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 what happened at the World Trade Center? What happened to uh, Daniel Pearl? What happened to, I mean, I'll, I'll, like Al-Qaeda is, well, they're violent, but they're not as violent. I, I hate when the media tries to make that distinction. Well, that's part of the media, the part that's influenced by the White House and influenced by the president's vision. His vision is that uh, Muslims are 99.9% .9 great people. And so there's this little statistical problem with that in the Middle East right now. Right. In the interview that you began the show with, he couldn't say the word jihadist he talked about those people. Well, there's a lot of them. There's thousands. There's 2,000 hardcore fighters in ISIS. They keep emphasizing that. Well, if you think you can overrun a country, the scale of two-thirds of Iraq with 2,000 people, then you're as naive as the people that seem right. to follow this line of reasoning. Right. Okay, the, the numbers are much, much larger. We don't really know. I'm sure the intelligence people they know. know yeah. uh, after this interview, General Hayden was on another show later in the day where he said that they, the intelligence people hadn't been able to get their message through to the president or other people. So the intelligence community, quote unquote, that part of it that studies foreign fighters, probably is a pretty good estimate, but we're not going to know that for a long time. Probably after the next event here in the United States, so, when we'll have a new discovery well, that because forbid, we knew it yeah. all the time, but somehow we didn't do enough about it. So are we less safe now, in your view, than when you left your position with the House Judiciary Committee Absolutely. in 06? Much, because we, we've had uh, frankly, six years of benign neglect on a whole variety of things. The interesting thing is that uh, President Obama's subordinates and key agencies seem to be wakening up, and there's been some personnel changes for the better. 
whether he was aware of them or not, I don't know. But right. the, the right. thing is, there clearly are some stronger people moving into some positions. I think the new Secretary of Homeland Security seems to be have a, a great deal more awareness and fortitude than the lady he replaced. Let's talk about uh, the uh, the Coalition for a Secure Driver's License, and of which you are the president. And let's uh, talk about what's going on at the border. I mean, this is and and what you know it, it relates to what we just talked about here. But let's specifically talk about the driver's licenses because once you have a driver's license, you could do anything, basically. I mean, you 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 have freedom to roam. You have freedom to open bank accounts. You could. I mean, you know better than I what what you have freedom to do. So, what is your organization trying to do, and why is it so important? What our organization is trying to do is uh, encourage as we can through good information, education, outreach, uh, people in the state offices, the state agencies to allow the people in the DMV to do their job well. The DMVs across the country are largely staffed by conscientious people. That's why they hassled you the last time you went to I was going to say, long lines, <laughs> they must be conscientious. Right? Well, but part of yeah. the long lines really is because most of the, the, the driver's license agencies are used by their state governments as cash cows, right. so they're understaffed. These long lines could be resolved with better staffing. The, and that secondarily, there's the conflict, which is as you ramp up the security to confirm you are who you say you are. It's longer. And by the way, the yeah. DMVs are doing that to keep drunk drivers off the road and to protect people from identity theft. They're not thinking about terrorism. A few might be. Right. But they're routine. They're dealing with the people they encounter that are the are trying to game the system usually are not good people. Right. And one, so one they're, they're trying to defend against crooks and uh, what people might call scumbags and others who are trying to manipulate the system. So what's going on around the country here and what, what, what's your, because more and more states are granting driver's licenses to illegals. Well, that's, uh, the, it's, that is a problem in itself because they're essentially endorsing a violation of law. But that's an issue that our president has endorsed. He, uh, in his campaign, spoke to the fact that he supported that when he was running for election. So obviously the federal government isn't going to do anything about that particularly. So uh, I think there's, first of all, our organization does not oppose providing lower tier driver's licenses to people who can't produce all the qualifications for that. It could be a homeless person. It doesn't need to be an illegal alien right. who's lost all of his or her documents. Right. But we think those, when you aren't sure who the person is, then I th we think states should conform with the federal law and says not for federal identification purposes because the feds have their standards which were in, incorporated into a law called the Real ID Act and the, states and the Real theirs. ID regulations. Yeah. So the states, some of the states have higher standards right. than the federal mm -hmm. standards. Uh, Iowa, Kansas, actually North Dakota have higher standards than the federal standards. But the point is, if you're going to be below those federal standards, right. then you need to mark the driver's license not for federal identification purposes. And California just had a big battle about that. They told the federal government they weren't going to do that, and the federal government is in the process of making them do that. So while California is going to issue driver's licenses to undocumented immigrants, um, and probably people who claim to be undocumented immigrants that are actually just lost their driver's license for other uh, reasons. Uh, right. And but they will have to mark on them, not for federal identification purposes, and on the face of it, California was trying to propose they put a little sign on it and put a little tag on the back. And by the way, that's a problem for other states, because we don't think about it, but there's a master agreement currently in some states change called the driver's license agreement, which is sanctioned under the interstate compact laws that of the federal if government. If it's good in one state, it's good, good in the other. Good in another, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when you start having variance states that, sure. that miss the mark, that have really low standards, then you, it creates problems in other states. But how, but, and we only have a couple of minutes left, how much of a security issue is this, uh, this issue of, of, of driver's licenses to illegals when it comes to the threat of terror? Uh, very high. Um, I brought some specific instances. Perhaps some other day we get back and talk to nitty gritty. But there have been a number of very serious threats. There was an effort made by a lone wolf terrorist to blow up the, uh, a 40-story tower in Dallas, Texas. He needed his driver's license to buy the explosive hmm. materials. Explosives in this country are controlled by driver's licenses. So if you want to buy explosives, you have to provide a driver's license. Okay, you can you can connect the dots there sure, real sure, fast. Absolutely. Okay, if you want to rent a truck, okay, yeah. the Oklahoma City bombing, he didn't use his own driver's license. He used a, a counterfeit driver's and license. And the rent a car in, down in uh, the first World Trade Center bombing. That's as well, correct. Comes to mind. Yeah. Right, that was a driver's license connection yeah. here in town with that. So the subway bomber that was stopped. Uh, the Zazi group that were local New Yorkers, they came, went to Colorado, they brought back explosive cursors. 
again, they were traced through their driver's license records. How could folks uh, find out more about your organization? Uh, www.idsecuritynow.org. Okay, idsecuritynow.org. And uh, Brian Zimmer, great. Keep up the fine work. We'll speak to you again soon. Thank you for coming Thank up. Thank you for, for having me on the show, My Steve. pleasure. Uh, folks, you can see how these issues are, 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 are interconnected. You know, whether it's uh, what's going on with ISIS and the threat of them coming in here once the caliphate is set up, as, as Brian alluded to, uh, or whether it's the driver's license issue, or whether it's, which we didn't get into as much, uh, the kids on the border, which is just uh, another symptom, another created, uh, um, I guess, a security threat by this administration, uh, indicating to parents all over the, uh, the world that, hey, if you could get your kids here, uh, there's a chance at least that they'll stay here. So um, it's all intertwined and it all affects one thing, and that's our security, and that's our security. And uh, we can't even secure the border, so how are we going to fix all this? Okay, when we come back, Gimme Five is next. Don't go away right here on the Steve Malsberg Show.